I'm looking right now at what I think is kind of an interesting question. Uh, people ask me all the time, like, hey, how do we know how much mass the Earth has? It's not like you can put it on a scale or something like that, but we do feel confident that we know these numbers. So what I want us to do right now is let's take a look at how do we know the mass of the sun? Um, and just thinking generally about it before we actually do any real work, um, I, I can tell that the way that something orbits the sun should have everything to do with how much mass the sun has, because if the sun had more mass, then that would lead to like tighter orbits, faster orbits. If the sun had less mass, just the opposite, and so on. So it's reasonable to expect that we should be able to know how much mass does the sun have just based on the exact details of how something orbits it. So let's take what we know about the Earth, how it orbits the sun, and we're going to figure out the mass of the sun based on just those bits of knowledge about the Earth. So first of all, I know that the Earth is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters away from the sun. And you can see that I wrote that in the sort of notation that your calculator would use that capital E means times 10 to the D. So 1.5 E 11 means 1.5 times 10 to the 11th power. And I converted a year, um, that's 365 and a quarter days, convert that into how many hours, into how many seconds, etc. And it turns out to be about 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Now, if I'm going to come up with an answer to this question, then it doesn't seem really, really obvious, like, oh, this is what I want to do. So I'm just going to start with Newton's laws. I'm going to do a free body diagram for what's happening to the Earth. So I'm just going to draw a free body diagram. And let's say, I don't know, here's the Earth. And the sun is just somewhere way off to the left. It's out of sight. But if I think about what forces act on the Earth, then OK, so I've got a gravitational force. I said off to the right, I meant to the left. So the sun is somewhere off to the left, and so there's a gravitational force from the sun on Earth off to the left if the sun is over to our left. So all the other forces on the Earth, yeah, I know that the, the moon pulls it, and Saturn pulls it, and Pluto pulls it, and blah, blah, blah. We could go on and on. but. Those are all going to be pretty minor details comparatively anyhow. So I'm just going to focus on what the sun does to the Earth. And then I'm basically I'm done with my free body diagram. So if I try to work with Newton's second law, then I know that net force equals mass times acceleration. But thinking about how this works for the Earth, um, OK, so the net force is I've just got this one force. So the net force is just the gravitational force from the sun on the Earth. And that's going to be equal to the mass of the Earth times the acceleration of the Earth. But I know that the Earth moves in, it's not exactly a circle. It's not perfectly a circle, but it's just very, 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 very close to a circle. And so that would mean that the acceleration, at least it's not perfectly this, but it's very, very, very close to speed squared divided by radius. And so if I work with that, well, now, the way that I know the gravitational force, I use Newton's law of universal gravitation. I take that big D constant, and then I'm going to multiply by the mass of the sun times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance between the sun and the Earth squared. That's equal to the mass of the Earth times the speed of Earth's orbit squared divided by the radius of the circle. By the way, let's stop and notice that the r for this r right here, that r is the radius of the circle. This r is the distance between Earth and the sun. But those are essentially the same thing in this case. If we think that the sun isn't really going anywhere, then those two r's are basically the same number. Now, ooh, when I look at this math, I can solve this math for the mass of the sun if only I knew everything else. And one thing that I can see right away is I know that I can just divide both sides by the mass of the Earth, 
And so how much mass the Earth has isn't going to affect our answer for how much mass the Sun has based on what we look at in terms of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Now, I just need to know what's that big G number. I know that number, that's just a constant. I need to know the radius of that path. And here it is. I need to know the speed of Earth in its orbit. And I need to know the radius. Once again, I know the radius. So from this point, I definitely can solve for the mass of the sun as soon as I figure out the speed. Now, one thing that I'm going to need to know in order to figure out the speed of Earth is, well, I know that speed, for something that's going in approximately a circle, that speed is 2 pi times the radius divided by the period. <coughs> now, I could use my knowledge of 2 pi times the radius. I know the radius, and I know the period. So I could substitute in those numbers. And when I do that, 2 pi times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters, divide all that by 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds, then here, I'll write that out. Then I can work this out, and I can get a speed of and yes, I'm rounding here. Actually, if we were doing this properly, then that number would be a little bit more rounded, but that's not our final answer anyhow, so I'm comfortable just leaving it as is. Now, actually, there are two different ways I could take this problem from here. Um, actually, I didn't even need to do that yet. Um, option number one, um, what I think you're most accustomed to from your previous experience in school, is just, okay, I have one variable, I know all these other numbers, now I'm just going to shove all these numbers in and churn out an answer. So if you choose to do that, that's option number one. I actually prefer option number two, which I'll show you a little bit later. But if I choose option number one, okay, let's start shoving in numbers. So first, I've got 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, blah, 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 MKS units. But hey, as long as you work with MKS units, you don't need to focus on what is that number. Times the mass of the sun divided by that radius is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. And I have to square that number. Equals, I'm going to take that speed that I just worked out. Square it and divide by the radius of that circular path is, yeah, I know it's not circular, it's elliptical, but it's flow. Um, the radius of that nearly circular path is the same number that we used before. Now if I stick these numbers in, I do some mathy maths, then I get over here, I get 0 .00 five, nine, seven units, 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 and I get 2.96 times 10 to the negative 33 units, 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 times the mass of the sun. I'll do that division, and I'll get a mass of the sun of, oh, about 2.01 times 10 to the 30th power, and I dropped my units there. Uh, but if you stick with it, then you'll see that you get kilograms. And besides, if I was only working with MKS units, I'm going to get MKS units back out. So there's an answer, although in the next video, I'm going to show you a way that I actually prefer that I'm going to save sticking in numbers until the very, very, very end. I like it better. Check it out.